So as you can see, this girl is digging away. I don't see any mark of life on it, which is definitely not a good sign. So now you got your vermiculate, but it's still not quite ready for you to place your eggs in. So what do you do next? You can see she has dirt on her nose. I'm sure she has dirt on her belly, dirt on her toes, and dirt on her tail. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and scrub that off. This is Valley Girl's roommate. Her name is Berber. This girl right here is actually Gravit, I believe. She is the daughter of a Burberry, who I just showed you. All right, here we go. That's the whole clutch. Oh, dug up. Yeah, beautiful. All right, so just like that, in one day, we're uh, looking at a pretty nice, nice incubator. What's going on, world? Peace, love, Pagonas. I'm Dave McLean, co-owner and CEO here at Lizard of Oz LLC. And for those who are new to the channel, welcome. This channel is all about reptiles. So if you're into reptiles, you definitely want to subscribe. And while you're at it, hit that notification button because you don't want to miss any of the videos we have coming. Now, today's video is action-packed. It's all about bearded dragon eggs, how to know when your females grab it, what to look for, what to do when she's ready to lay, what to do with the eggs, how to incubate them. Like I said, you're going to want to watch this video all the way to the end because it's loaded with tips and tricks. All right? So without further ado, let's get it. So as you can see, this girl is digging away. She's definitely gravid. This is one of the females I actually locked up with Logo. This is Valley Girl. This is one of my green project females. She's a hypo, 100% head translucent. Logo is a translucent, 100% head hypo. So we're gonna get some hypo trans, 100% head wits from this pairing, and hopefully they'll have some good green tint to them so I can use them to continue the green project. Not so much pressed to uh, implement the uh, Whiplet gene into my green project just yet. I don't really want to int introduce too many genes into the project. I really want to just focus on the color. But I have a hunch that Whiplet and Zero could actually play a very critical part in helping me to reach that green that I'm really looking forward to. Well, we're disturbing her now. But this is her lay bin. As you see, she's spread the dirt out quite nicely and she's digging her little hole here. But soon, she should be in there laying some eggs. Sorry to bother you, babe. We can get back to work. All right, so I left this girl in overnight. because She was profusely digging. I felt like she really had to lay. Let's see if we got some eggs. Hmm? Yeah, it looks like we do got some eggs. But judging based on her size, I mean, she's a big girl, but it just looks like she's not finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to take her out, sit her in some warm water, let her soak, and then I'm going to go through and see how many eggs we find. Uh, then we'll go ahead and get her some food, see if she eats, if she starts sticking again, then we'll go ahead and put her back in this lay bin and let her lay the rest of her eggs if she has more eggs to lay. Alright. Alright, so we got this big beautiful girl soaking. And this is warm, not hot, not cold water. Warm water she's soaking in. So we'll let her sit in here for a little bit. Give her a chance to uh, drink some water and get some of the dirt off of her. And while she's doing that, we'll go ahead and go through that lay bin and see what we have as far as eggs. Okay, now when digging up eggs, she has some on the surface. Usually, uh, all the eggs will be under the uh, mound of dirt and buried. Um, but what we're gonna do is, like I said, we're gonna go through and, and, and see she might have eggs under here, over here, she might have laid a lot of eggs, who knows? But when digging up eggs, you definitely wanna be very careful, okay? Now, since these eggs were just laid, it's okay that I move them around a little bit. If they had been sitting for 24 hours, you wouldn't wanna uh, turn them. 
turkey. Now when digging, like I said, be very careful. You don't want to pop any of the eggs. Just lightly brushing the dirt off. This one looks like it popped into there itself. It's a little light. So now we've got this whole little area clean. We're gonna move some of this dirt off to the side. Going, you know, still being being very gentle to make sure that we don't accidentally come across the egg and pop it. And then we're gonna work our way forward now to the mound of dirt to see if there are eggs under the mound. And as you can see, we've already come across an egg. She looks like she laid a lot of eggs. Hopefully all these eggs are fertile. I did see her lock uh, twice with my boy Logo. But that doesn't guarantee that the eggs are fertile. Okay. And that looks like that's all the eggs. And the reason I didn't keep digging is because I can feel how tightly this is pressed when I uh, when I first, because I created this mound for her to have a place to dig and bury her eggs. And I can tell that it's still so tightly pressed that she's never dug under it, okay? So there's no need to continue to, to dig here. All right, so let's see what we got here. We got one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen big eggs. Now, like I said, I'm not sure that these are fertile. Um, I don't see any uh, red dots with a dot of life on them. So, what we're going to do now is just go ahead and get them brushed off and take a closer look at them, okay? Uh, you wanna brush them off because the uh, substrate that they're in right now, this is Eco Earth mixed with sand, this can mold in the incubator, all right? Um, so you wanna go ahead and get them brushed off, get them cleaned off, and then uh, we'll get them placed in some vermiculate, whether we know if they're fertile or not, and then we'll just incubate them. If they aren't fertile, then they won't develop any veins and they'll die, we'll throw them away. If they are fertile and we're lucky, you know, We'll have some uh, future head wits on the way. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and take the eggs and get them, uh, get them cleaned off, brushed off, and put inside of this container here. And then we're gonna go ahead and get them into another container that we'll have filled with vermiculite. This will be this container here, and. Um, once we've done that, we'll uh, go ahead and place them in the incubator, okay? Now, when dealing with eggs, you know, you gotta look at this just like, a, you know, like a baby or an infant or whatever, but a feet, feet in the fetus form, I guess, but it's an egg, right? Saying all that to say that you've got to be sanitary. You definitely wanna make sure that you don't have any germs, uh, you know, in your in in your containers or in your environment, etc. You want to be as sterile as possible. Okay, so what I have right here is just some water and F10. F10 is just a veterinary disinfectant. Shout out to Beardy Brandis. Uh, she's a she's a huge advocate of this. I actually have had this sitting in my cabinet for years and never used it. But then after talking to Beardy Brandis, she was telling me all the many benefits of it. And I started looking into it, researching it, and seeing all the different uses of this right here. It can be used to treat respiratory infections. Shout out to my man Keith Dennis over at uh, Genetically Modified Dragons for putting me on that. It can be used to uh, fight respiratory infections. Uh, I've actually used it for one of my snakes, and it, it worked amazingly. Um, and it, of course, can be used to disinfect. Uh, and it's a pretty safe solution, and you don't need to use a lot of it when making this bottle right here. You only use about 5 milliliters in this in this whole bottle. The rest is water, and it's 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 very powerful, a great cleaner. Before this, I was using uh, strictly bleach and water, five percent bleach, uh, the remaining percent water, and healthy habitat, which is another disinfectant that's also safe to uh, actually spray on your animals 
um, your animals can come in contact with it and you don't have to worry about it harming them, but it deodorizes and uh, sterilizes enclosures, etc. so forth and so on. I still use both of those, but now I have this also added to my arsenal, this uh, F10, okay? And I'll put a link in the description for you guys if you want to purchase some of your own so you can have it. I also will put a link to uh, Healthy Habitat in the description uh, as well, guys. So... Like I said, I recommend all three of those products I just named, Bleaching Water, uh, F10, and Healthy Habitat. Uh, but right now, we're just going to be using the F10 solution, okay? I've already sprayed this container out, got a paper towel sitting in it so that I can use this to kind of brush the dirt of the eggs off on, okay? And before we place the eggs into this uh, dish right here, we'll, we'll be spraying it with the F10 solution and wiping it out real good, all right? And it's time to clean my mice enclosure, so I'm doing a little sniffling and sneezing. Uh, I have allergies, <laughs> right? And the mice definitely, uh, you know, gets my allergies. I have to clean them every two days for the most part in order to keep myself from not having allergies. This is actually day number three because I've been crazy busy, so they will be getting cleaned today. So just uh, forgive me for all of my sniffling and possible sneezing, guys. All right, so we got 18 eggs. We're going to just take them out one at a time. Okay, so you see I have the egg in here, right? And I'm just going to kind of roll it around on the uh, paper towel and get some of this dirt off. Now, looking at this egg, I don't see any mark of life on it, which is definitely not a good sign. Not to mention it has kind of a yellowish tint to it. But these could be so freshly laid that it hasn't even started to develop yet. So we're, we're not going to be too pessimistic just yet. Like I said, we're going to go ahead and get all the eggs brushed off. But also what I know is when eggs are usually fertile, the dirt comes off a lot easier. It doesn't cling to them like this. Um, so... Yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, get these brushed off and then see what happens. Now this egg right here, it seems to have a hole in it. What you can do to see if it has a hole in it is just lightly squeeze, lightly squeeze it so you don't make your own hole, okay? And see if you get anything oozing out of it. I don't see anything oozing, so we're good for now. And since these these eggs seem to really be holding on to the dirt, like I said, I really don't feel confident in the fact that they are fertile at this moment. Another indicator about their fertility is how she laid them. She's not a first time breeder. This is actually her third time being bred. So I feel like, you know, she knows what to do and she usually buries her eggs. Uh, in this case, she just laid them, which kind of makes me feel like they aren't fertile as well. But like I said, still gonna be optimistic and, you know, hope for the best. Not to mention, I could really use uh, some eggs. My production has been quite slow. Uh, as of recent. So, <clears throat> to speed this up, I'm gonna get a wet paper towel and kind of use that to brush them off. The, the water and the dampness on the uh, paper towel should do a little better job of grabbing the uh, dirt off of the egg. All right, so you got a damp paper towel. Like I said, you don't want to be soaking wet, you don't want to be damp. And okay, there we go. Look, see that red developing? I don't know if you can see it, it's very slight. So, uh, it makes me feel a little better. Like I said, it could just be that these eggs are so fresh from late. But some of them are still sticky. You definitely want to get wiped off as you can, though. Like I said, it's eco earth, little mold. All right, let me try to zoom through this. And we're just lightly touching. Just 
lightly touching the egg, okay? So I want to scrub them with the, uh, paper towel. And remember, this is not a soaking wet paper towel, okay? It's just damp. All right, I'm gonna roll through it, guys. So, you know, I'll, I'll try to keep it in focus so you can see what I'm doing, but uh, I'm gonna try to speed this process. Okay, look at that. See that, that red? That is a circle of light. Okay, and from there is where all the uh, veins begin to stem from. Okay. So yeah, feeling a little more optimistic. Like I say, I, I, one way or the other, we're gonna go ahead and incubate these guys. Oh yeah, this one has a uh, circle of light too. Okay, we're, we're looking good. Hopefully my man Logo got the job done. It. Circle of life right there, the uh, dot of life. All right, get everybody cleaned up. <laughs> everybody, <laughs> are they bodies yet? They will be hopefully in the future. But there you go. And as you can see the red on them now. So now we're gonna go ahead and get that uh, container cleaned out with some, uh, like I said, F10 solution. Put some vermiculate in it. And I'll show you how I mix the vermiculate. And then we'll go ahead and put the eggs in it and get them in the incubator and see what happens. So this is vermiculate, okay? And this is my preferred hatching medium or hatching substrate, all right? Uh, I've showed it to you guys before and I'll put a link in the description in case you wanna get some of your own. Once again, guys, I appreciate all of the uh, support and the affiliate links definitely do help support the channel. So if you wanna get you some vermiculate and you decide to purchase it through our affiliate link, I appreciate it, okay? But as you see, I got me a nice amount in my uh, container and this is good, this is all I need. Okay, and there are many different uh, substrates or mediums you can use for hatching, such as uh, vermiculite, perlite, hatchrite. Some people use the sim containers, which don't require any substrate, just the water. Uh, but me personally, as far as price, convenience, um, I'm an old school guy. You know, this just feels more organic to me. Uh, so I use vermiculite. It's got a nice big container full of it. But even still, it's not quite ready for us to put the eggs into. I'll show you what I do next to get it ready for the eggs. All right, so now you got your vermiculate, but it's still not quite ready for you to place your eggs in. So what do you do next? Okay, I'm gonna show you. 
what I do is I like to add warm water to the vermiculite. Not cold, not burning hot, a little a little hotter than warm, but not scalding. Because ultimately it will affect the temperature once your eggs are ended in the incubator, okay? Now I incubate my eggs at around 84 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So we don't want this burning up because of course it'll take us past that. So just warm water is fine. Let me get the right feel. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and put the water into our vermiculite. We wanna get it nice and wet because this is what's gonna retain the humidity that your eggs need to hatch successfully, okay? Now what I do is I get a nice amount of water in there. And then, once y'all can see the water starting to overflow around the edges, okay, I'm gonna turn that off. It's nice and slushy. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze all that water out. Gonna lose some vermiculite in the process. But that's okay. And then just squeezing it out with my hand, pressing it out, making sure that all the water is out. Okay, we'll come back and clean this up later. Don't wanna just run that all down the sink. But now we got that in, and I'm usually a little more neat about it, but you know, when you're on camera, it is what it is. So we're gonna go ahead and get that all leveled out. And then I'll, I'll run my hands through it and mix it up. Okay. And pat it down one more time. You don't want it to be too wet because that could cause molding. So that's why you want to go back through and just double check and make sure no excess water is running off. All right, no excess water. We're good to go. Wash my hands off right quick. All right. Now it's time to place in our egg. So now we got our vermiculite ready. I'm going to go ahead and wipe the edges off because we want visibility when we... Uh, have those eggs in here. We want to be able to see what's going on with them without having to take the top off. We want to be able to just look through the sides. Let's wipe the edges off. Okay. Now, this is the fun part. We want to actually go ahead and get these eggs placed in the vermiculite. What I like to do is I use my sifter, I use the back end of it to make the imprint for where I'm going to place my eggs. Okay. Let me show you. Now we got 18 eggs, so we want to keep that and take that into account. If we run out of space, of course, we can just get another container and put the rest of the remainder of the egg in a separate container. But there is an art to this, okay? Now pressing down, making a nice indention. Eggs are ready to go. And I like to sit my eggs uh, red dot up. See that, that circle of life that we talked about? See how they're starting to show a little more now? Like I said, these eggs were so fresh, you couldn't really see it. But like I said, my eggs red dot up. I set them right into that little indention that we made. And voila. And then I'll just go ahead and press the vermiculite around the sides of it so that it's halfway covered, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of the remainder. We're gonna go ahead and do that for the remaining uh, 17 eggs. Putting a nice little distance of space between each impression, because you gotta think also, once the eggs start to incubate, they're going to expand, okay? And now it's becoming even a little easier too to get the dirt off the eggs because they've had a little time to sit, okay? Now let's show you that, see that space between those? That's, that to me is uh, adequate space, okay? That's enough space. This will give the eggs room to expand and everyone to hatch out. 
All right, now we're gonna go ahead and zoom through the remaining eggs. You guys have the idea. And it's a force of habit, guys, for me to actually take the eggs out of the container and then wipe it on my shirt like this just to make sure I got any access dirt off of it. All right, so if you don't like getting dirty, you might not want to be a reptile breeder, all right? Okay, so we've gone around the whole container, but we still have five eggs left. How will we fit them in here? All right, and that's why I say this is an art to this, guys. Let me show you. And every now and then you have to knock some of this dirt off of your uh, edge because it'll start getting sloppy. Alright, last egg. This one's actually very textured. Okay, anyway. Alright, ta da. Look at that beautiful bowl of life. Alright. So now, we're gonna go ahead and get our top on these. We're gonna label it. With the label, we're gonna put who we crossed, when these eggs were laid, and how many eggs were laid, okay? Put the top on, get these in the incubator, and then we'll check back in, and check back in on them in a few days to see if they start to vein up, all right? Okay, now, we can't forget about this girl right here. It's all thanks to this girl that we were even able to do this video and have eggs to talk about to begin with, right? Okay? So she's got a nice soak in. We're gonna go ahead and get her scrubbed off, get some of this dirt off of her, and then we're gonna get her placed back into an enclosure to warm up and get her some food because she's done a great job. You've done a great job, mama. This is Valley Girl. It's one of my favorites. Uh, daughter of Kiwi and um, Adonis. That's why she's so huge, because Adonis is the biggest dragon we, we own. Kiwi was pretty big, and this is the beginning of the uh, Green Line project, really. Well, Kiwi and Adonis were, but the beginning results, <laughs> okay? And I know you guys, she's not green. She's not lime green. She's not iguana green, but that is the goal. That's what I'm working towards. I believe that anything is possible, and uh, if I can, especially with bearded dragons, and if I can continue to selectively breed, eventually, maybe it's five years down the line, maybe it's ten years down the line, Maybe it's 20 years down the line, but before I hang up my hat, hopefully I will have produced some iguana green bearded dragons. And I'll do a video for you guys on my green line, okay? But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get this girl scrubbed up. All right, so all I do is take a toothbrush, okay? Now this toothbrush has been through a lot. I sterilize it often, you know what I mean? You wanna make sure your stuff is sterile and clean when dealing with your animals, because you don't wanna be passing bacteria and germs around. But as you can see, she has dirt on her nose. I'm sure she has dirt on her belly. Dirt on her toes and dirt on her tail, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and scrub that off. I'm gonna show you how I do that, all right? Let's sit her in the water. Scrub off that face, and we're just gentle with it, okay? Get under those hands. I know, baby, I know. Get that tail, see that tail? All that dirt. We want to get that. And we'll actually move her into a tub with no water, just so she'll be a little more relaxed. Or not. Hold on, Valley. And the key is not to fight the dragon, okay? Respect the dragon. Understand that, like, people, oh, she just let out a, uh, definitely an infertile egg. Remember I said I thought she might have some eggs still? So that's an infertile, 
And then she's actually just taking a poop. Which is part of the reason why she's doing so much squirming. So we'll let her go through that right quick. Yeah, that's definitely a slug. You can tell by the size. And the fact that it was followed by just straight poop. All right, so she finished. As you can see, she laid a slug. All right. Um, I went ahead and got her some more fresh water, warm water, just to keep her relaxed. And just so she's not uh, exposed to unnecessary bacteria. I know, baby, we're almost there. But all we're gonna do now is just get that belly really quickly. And all I do is hold them up like this. And then spread my fingers like this. And then I come between my fingers and spread. Belly. She's got a dirty beard. I see. Let's get that dirt off her beard. We don't need her to be spotless. We will clean her again, but we just want to get her cleaned up a little bit before we get her put into her enclosure. All right. So now we're gonna go ahead and get her in her enclosure, and then uh, get her some food, some uh, lots of salad, dust with calcium. She's gonna need plenty of calcium after laying those eggs. And I'll even probably get her some fresh pinkies dipped in calcium and multivitamins, all right? So I'll show you guys that. All right, so we got her back in her enclosure. And uh, she usually has a roommate, but uh, I'm actually breeding her roommate now or trying to breed her roommate now. This is Valley Girl, hypo head trans from our green line. She's a beauty. Look at her. Look at those eyes. Yeah, I'm talking about you. So we're gonna go ahead and get her some food. Like I said, a few pinkies, uh, dipped in calcium, and um, some greens, and uh, maybe some supers with some multivitamins, and just let her warm up and relax. Job well done, baby. All right, so I got my pinkies coated in multivitamins and calcium powder, little mixture here, and we're gonna try to tong feed them and see if she takes them out of the tongs. If not, we'll just put them in a bug bowl and let her eat them when she's ready. All right, so we got some supers, and those are also coated in calcium and multivitamins. And she's probably not going to eat right away, but that's the beauty of having a uh, bug bowl. She can go eat when she pleases. So you can see I have the uh, mice, pinky mice sitting over there for her. Got the supers over here. And the supers are like high in fat, so they'll help her get her weight up. The mice will also help her get her weight up. It's a lot of protein. But like I said, we're also going to put some veggies in here in a second. And then she'll be good to go. Just let her warm up. Get situated. Good job, baby. Good job, baby. You did a good job. You did a good job. Yes, you did. All right, so I got a handful of turnip greens. I tore these up by hand. Don't need a, don't need a bunch of them. And uh, turnip greens are one of my uh, staples as far as uh, vegetation goes. I like to feed turnip greens at least four to five days out of seven because turnip greens are very, very high in calcium. They have a soft texture to them, and the dragons really love turnip greens. Want some now? Still warming up? Okay, take your time. And I'm just going to throw those right on in there with the uh, pinkies. And I even put a few of them in this bowl with the supers. The supers will probably eat some of them. A <laughs> little gut loading on the spot right there. But yep, now she's good to go. So like I said, we'll just leave this in here for her. Let her warm up and eat as she pleases. Keep an eye on her and make sure she's okay. This is Valley Girl's roommate. Her name is Burberry. She's a hypo. She's not head trans. She's a hypo red. She is the daughter of Adonis and Oz. So she's actually Valley Girl's half sister. This girl right here is actually gravid, I believe, and she's been digging nonstop. And that's one of the ways you know when your dragon is pregnant, when she's restless, 
isn't really eating too much but it's huge and uh, just constantly digging uh, that's a sign it's time for her to go into a uh, lay bin but this beautiful girl right here is goji berry beautiful blues on her and she's a hypo 100% head trans she is the daughter of uh, Burberry who I just showed you and MJ who is no longer with us but was a very very bright red translucent uh, head hypo male produced by KP's Critters uh, Burberry as you know was produced by me so this pairing right here is actually from her and Gambit which is another dragon produced by me he's a hypo trans leatherback dunner so these should be some very bright red hypo trans leatherback dunners and things in between hopefully coming soon she's done dug her cage to pieces gonna go ahead and get her in the lay bin and then get this tank cleaned out all right so I'm just getting back in the house and this girl was a girl I was showing you earlier who was digging all around in her tank it's gone for a few hours and as you can see by the eggs that we have spread all around she laid hoping that these are fertile if so this will be our second clutch today which is great and there'll also be some red red hypo trans leather back gunners in this clutch hopefully definitely proud of this pairing and definitely hoping that this pairing will be uh these will be fertile eggs okay um been trying to get a pairing a lock from gambit for quite some time now so this is exciting really wish you did a better job of laying but hey you gotta take it how you can get it Beggars can't be choosers. And, uh, and this was her first time laying, so, you know, that's kind of, you know, this is kind of expect, this kind of, I'm not going to say expected, but this does happen for some dragons when they lay for the first time, okay? All right, so we got this girl soaking. This is Goji. And I'm not one who focuses on uh, blue barring. But I do like to see it, you know what I mean? Uh, not a focus of mine, but I have seen some really some really nice blue barring in these past few years from other people's productions, such as like Mike Johnston, my boy Cameo Hall, just came out with a really nice um, blue bar clutch. Mike Johnston is kidding kids and dragons, and Cameo Hall would be celebrity dragons. Uh, you might want to check them out if, you, if you're really into barring. Now let's go ahead and uh, get a look at that clutch. All right, there we go. That's the whole clutch all dug up. And they are beautiful. These are definitely fertile. They're fresh though. When they're first laid, they're they're a lot softer. Uh not as white. Can be a little sticky. After they sit out in the air for a little while, they get a little harder. And the uh circle of life becomes a little more obvious. But you can already see it on them, like that guy right there. You can see that red dot right there. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get these cleaned off, put into some vermiculite, and in the incubator, baby. Clutch number two, only one day. That's what I'm talking about. Two clutches in a day. That's gonna be, that's gonna be good. And like I said, I should hopefully get some hypo trans leather dunners from this. Red reds. Oh man. Doesn't get any better, baby. Oh, this one bust. If you look real close, you can see the uh, ooze. This one's no good. She probably popped it when she was digging around. That happens from time to time. All right, so that looks like all of them. Let me just double check. All right, so that's all of them. Let's get a final count of what we got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
17, 18, 19. And if you include this one, she laid 20 eggs. But we only made the hardest 19 of them. Um, there might possibly be a way that we can salvage this egg right here. I'll see what I can do. There we go. 19. Now we're gonna go ahead and get some vermiculate, get it ready, get them in it, and get them inside of the incubator, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so we got our vermiculate. We're gonna go ahead and get our water right. Remember guys, we want warm water. Not hot, not cold, just warm water. Just trying to achieve a temperature of 84 degrees in the incubator, and we don't want this uh, medium throwing that incubation temperature off. And if the water is too hot, then of course this will be the, the hatching medium will be too hot, and if it's too cold, etc., so forth and so on. Alright, guys, so we're gonna get our warm. Just gonna go ahead and pour that in there, try to get it all around. Okay? And now, turn our water off. We're just gonna drain the excess water out of the container. First, we wanna make sure the water touches all parts of the container so that the entire substrate is wet. All right. And you can push down on it, you know, to get to really drain that water out. Okay? And we're just gonna make sure it's all even. Let's mix it up. Okay, pat it back down. Pull down from the sides too. You don't want that excess on the sides. Okay. Ta-da! There we go. Go ahead and rinse my hands off. And let's get these eggs in there. Alright, look at that. These dragons are going to be so red, the eggs are already red, huh? Super excited about this clutch, guys. Two clutches in one day definitely helps turn around production. You know what I mean? Like I said, things have been a little slow for me. But you got to bear through the storms, push through, and uh, come out on top. Stay down till you come up, baby. That's how we do it. Stay down till you come up. All right? But yeah, let's go ahead and get these inside of this vermiculate and in the incubator. And we want to get them as clean as possible before placing them into the substrate because remember that that the uh, substrate from the lay bin can cause mold in the incubator. Okay, so we want to get as much of that off as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and give me a wet napkin right quick so I can wipe some of these eggs off. Actually, I just use my shirt because that's what I usually do. I just wipe them off with my shirt. Get it how you live. And it looks like I have another egg right here with a small hole in it. So I'm going to sit this one to the side, put those in last. There's a little trick to, uh, there's, like a, there's actually a couple tricks you can use when you have small holes in your eggs. But I'll share those with you guys on another video. Shout out to Beardy Brandis. She knows what I'm talking about. That's another good breeder, upcoming breeder that you might want to give a follow to. Go check out. I'll put her uh, Instagram and uh, social media information in the description as well. Really genuine person. Really has a uh, deep love and passion for Beardy Dragons. I mean, her name is Beardy Brandis. All right. Enough said. But really couldn't say enough about her. A very positive, optimistic person. And, um, you know, solid, solid production. She's not one of those people who just threw a bunch of money at it. You know what I mean? She really has a passion for it. That's not to say that she hasn't invested a whole lot of money into her craft. But when I, what I mean when I say that is Brandis actually 
uh, doesn't have a uh, she doesn't specialize in a bunch of like zeros and whiplets and like stuff like that. She actually just buys what she loves and breeds what she loves. Okay, and you know she took the route that I took, the 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 slow route, working your way up. You know, it was I was working with dragons and breeding dragons years and years. Uh, before I found my way on uh, Instagram and social media and, and started actually investing heavily into zeros and wit blitz, etc., so forth and so on. You know, I couldn't afford to throw thousands of dollars at it at one time. I had to test it out. You know what I mean? Really, really uh, prove my passion. And you know what? I'm going to do a video for you guys to show you where I started and like how I literally lived in a house full of just glass tanks everywhere. People couldn't even walk. <laughs> And I wasn't even producing dragons yet. I just had them. I just loved them. I had adults and I wasn't producing. Then I started building my own tanks. All the tanks you see in my videos, all those wood enclosures, I built those from scratch. Okay? So I'll also do a video on how to build your own custom enclosures too. I know that is something that really benefit everybody that, that subscribes to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe so you can get all of this good info. I don't want you guys missing this. You know what I mean? Dropping some gems for you. Much love to all my subscribers, all right? LOZ Nation is growing. All right, let's try to zoom through this so we don't drag this video out too long. You guys know I like to talk. Remember that your sifter tip will start to get a little, uh, dirty so go ahead and knock that dirt off just so it can stay neat when you're making the holes and if you don't have a sifter tip or any tip to use to make the uh, imprint for your eggs you can always use your thumb guys let's see how we give you those gems if you love it let me know in the comments all right in the comments put keep dropping gems let me know who's actually really watching these videos and who's just looking through the first three minutes and getting out of here, right? Where are my loyal subscribers, my loyal viewers at? Let me know in the comments. Say, keep dropping those gems. <laughs> Everybody's gonna come to the channel, look at the comments and be like, why the hell is everyone saying keep dropping gems? <laughs> Inside joke for the people who are actually watching, all right? For the people who are actually paying me attention. Only we got to know. And you may notice that I put the uh, eggs very close to the outside of the tub. You don't want them touching the outside because then condensation can drip down on them and this could, uh, you know, mess up your eggs. Let me get this one a little deeper in here. But I did that so that I'll have more space to work with on the inside here for these extra eggs that I have here. And these two that I have sitting off in the corner. Like I said, we're gonna to try to salvage these. I don't wanna lose anything from this clutch. I don't wanna miss one opportunity to hit that Hypo Trans Leather Dunner. If I can just get one replica of my boy Gambit, like I said, I'm gonna show you Gambit, guys. I love Gambit, he's one of my favorite productions. Tell you a crazy story about Gambit, okay? So, when I first produced Gambit, everybody was going crazy for Gambit, everybody wanted Gambit, right? He was the only one, he was the only uh, Hypo Trans Leather Dunner that I had out of the clutch. I, I produced a, a few trans dunners, uh, trans leather dunners, hypo leather dunners, etc. But he was the only hypo trans leather dunner out of the clutch. And he is just a beautiful red. And I actually had an offer and sold him for $750. Okay? Which to me was still a steal because I didn't really want to let him go. You know what I mean? I knew that he could just, in the long run, not only would he make me way more money with his production, with his bloodline, but I mean, I, I honestly, I, I don't, I don't really do this just for the money. This is a, 
this is a tough way to make a living. Granted, this is my full-time job, and I do have a lot of <laughs> side jobs, but uh, this is a very tough way to make a living. You got to have a tough skin to be a full-time reptile breeder, and that and that be how you feed your family. And you definitely got to be a uh, hard worker. You have to be dedicated to the craft, okay? But uh, long story short, I like to keep dragons really just to look at them, just to collect them. It's a labor of love. Ask any, any real reptile breeder any bearded dragon breeder any reptile breeder period they'll tell you man this is this is not this is not easy it's fun it's rewarding but it's hard work i mean it's hard work and then you have people who you know hate throw salt get jealous uh you know are negative etc so forth and so on which i try to just steer clear of thank god for the block button but whatever the case all that being said i sold them for 750 dollars so then, you know, I'm excited. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, he just sold $750. And then the missus says, what? You sold him? I need you to give all that money back. He's staying here. What? 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 So, yeah, that's how that went. And he's been here, and and crazy is crazy thing is he's he's over two years old, and this is his first year producing. So, for a long time, I was like, man, I kept him, and he didn't even produce anything for me. Um, but then at the same time, I really didn't have females that I felt like were optimal to pair him to. Too, I don't like just throwing anything together. Um, but uh, and he didn't grow as fast as everybody. Now he's just huge, and it's like he just caught his growth spurt like out of nowhere, and he's just he just doesn't stop eating now. He's just getting big. Um, and his dad, oh man, I, I loved his I love his whole line. Uh but anyway, he reminds me of his dad now. His dad's name was Hellboy. Uh I'll try to get you guys a picture of him too in this video. Gotta gotta dig through my library. But whatever the case, um Yeah, so so being here now, over two years later, and seeing him produce, it, I gotta say it is quite a rewarding feeling. All right, so we're going to try to go ahead and salvage these two eggs. Like I said, I'll let you know the tip for this, for salvaging these two, two eggs in a later video. Shout out again to my girl, Beardy Brandis. She knows what I'm talking about. All right, but I'll uh, I'll let you guys in on the tip. And like I said, there's actually a couple ways you can do it. Um, some more reliable than others. But I'll, I'll let you guys in on that little tip or trick in another video. If you want to know what it is, put keep dropping gems in the comments. Keep dropping gems in the comments, guys. Let me know that you're watching these videos, all right? Who's staying with me? All right, there we go. We got all of them in there. Look at that work of art. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so let's go ahead and count them up to make sure that we uh, know what we're talking about here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Let's just count that one time. I don't think I got that right. So we're starting with this egg right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There, that makes more sense. So 20 eggs. 20 eggs, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're going to play a little game. I think I'm going to number these eggs, right, with a non-toxic marker. Definitely got to mark the ones that were my uh, two lucky ducks that we're trying to salvage here to see if they if they uh, make it all the way through the hatching. But we're going to number them with a non-toxic marker, and then we're going to play a little game and see which one hatches out to be a hypotrans leather dunner. All right? All right, so this right here is a non-toxic paint marker. Okay, this is also the same type of marker that I use, not this color, but the same type of marker that I use to mark male and female bearded dragons. And you want to use non-toxic, obviously, because it's not toxic. And when you're marking your dragons with it, it'll just come off after they shed, okay? Uh, I'll put a link in the description for you guys if you need to, you know, want to get you some non-toxic paint markers so you can use them for your eggs or for your uh, animals, okay? But let's go ahead and get these guys numbered. We're going to start with the two lucky ones, right? They're going to be uh, a star. I mean, we're just going to put a dot. 
in a dot, right? And then we're gonna put one and two, okay? So dot one and dot two are separate from everybody else. So if you wanna if you wanna place your bets on dot one or dot two, just put dot one or dot two, right? But everybody else will just get regular enough. All right, so I'll let you guys get a final look at them before they go into the incubator. Okay, starting with dot one, dot two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Which one is it? Which one of these 20 eggs is gonna be a hypotrans leather dunner? If not, which two? But you can only bet on one, all right? So, put which, which egg you think it'll be in the comments, guys. All right, so let's get these guys in the incubator. Get the top on them, get it labeled, and get them in the incubator. So there's our lucky clutch. Goji B, cross the gambit. Goji B is a hypo head trans coral red produced here, and Gambit is a hypo trans leather dunner red produced here. 20 eggs laid on April 30th, 2019. So we should see these guys in June, June 30th to be specific, all right? I'll keep you updated on their progress though. Now that we harvested this girl's eggs, we're gonna go ahead and get her all cleaned up. As you see, a lot of dirt has already come off. We're gonna scrub her feet, scrub her belly, scrub her beard, scrub the base of her tail and then get her into an enclosure, get her fed, and let her relax. Good job, Tay, babe. You are on fire. Can't wait to see what you reduce for me, mama. Can't wait, huh? Let me see. You got you. You're such a pretty girl. You did good for your first time. Great job, 20 eggs, I'm proud of you. So proud of you. All right, so just like that, in one day, we're uh, looking at a pretty nice, Nice incubator. Added two clutches today, great harvest. And uh, probably wondering what this is, right? So earlier when I cleaned out the uh, layout bin, I double checked before I put a uh, goji berry in there and I noticed that I had let three eggs get by me. So actually that 18 egg clutch that we got from Valley Girl earlier is a 21 egg clutch. So 20, 20 eggs and 21 eggs. 20 eggs from goji berry, 21 eggs from Valley Girl, a total of 41 eggs we harvested today. Uh, one clutch of uh, <clears throat> reds and one clutch of uh, Het Whip Blitz slash Green Project Babies. Then we got this clutch of citruses that should be hatching uh, at the beginning of May. So basically in a week or so. And then we have our snake eggs up here. And I actually had to remove one more egg. So we're down from seven to five eggs. Hopefully these five make it. So yeah, I got to say it's been a busy day, but it's been very, very rewarding and well worth it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, and most importantly, hit that notification button so you don't miss the next videos. All right? There's nothing but fire coming your way. I'm just, I'm just pushing it out. Dragon status, baby. Dragon status. Peace, love, begonas, y'all. Thanks for tuning in.